or that it played, and there is a respect there. For, you know, yeah. like, then the, the, there, is, there is a respect. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think it's important to acknowledge that as well because with um, medicine, the way that we view medicine at the moment, there's a lot of that handing over the power, um, you know, to, I guess, you know, that, that particular drug and what it's doing for our bodies. But um, I think it's also helpful mm. to acknowledge that our bodies have this healing power within themselves as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's nice to see that starting to integrate itself, that awareness into the West, um, slowly but surely. Um, can you talk to us a little bit about, um, I guess, you're talking about the connection between plants and the heavens and things like that. I guess were you trying to yeah. touch on the spiritual power of plants when you were yeah, talking I mean, about like, um, Yeah, I mean, there's a, there's, there's, a, there's a guy over in the States, if anyone... Um, I like talking about this. It's not necessarily my area. Um, I like to cover it with my sourcing <laughs> philosophy and having yep. an understanding of this. But yep. um, there's, a, there's a guy called um, Sager Hotham over in the States and he talks a lot about, um, I, I don't know if he calls it this, but like cosmic herbalism um, and how different herbs align with different planets and how you can, um, you know, really, you know, like, align your your um, herbal practice with where the planets are and which planets okay. are strengthened and so on and so yep. forth. Um, and this is all assuming we don't have like hardcore flat earthers listening to us that just think it's a projection, but like whatever. Like, yeah. I'm, like, <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, I like bringing cosmic energy and the infinite energy. And th this is basically one of the things that um, the herbs do when the herbs are um, growing in the wild um, and if they're, you know, and to an extent when they're growing semi-wild, um, so that when they're, when they're wild-crafted, which is the minimum that I like to um, like to go for, and from areas that are detail or detail, whichever way you want to pronounce, um, they are in their original place. They're growing off material they want to grow and they're comfortable, you know, they're at home. When they're that, when they're in that in that space, they can, they, they suck up the cosmic energy and they, they, they bring the heavens down into physical form and at the same time share physical form information with the heavens. And so there's a, there's a symbiotic relationship there. So something like um, dendrobium, um, which is an orchid, and it grows, we, we source it um, from China because it's a Chinese herb and grows there. It grows on cliff, cliff faces. It grows on south-facing cliff faces because in the northern hemisphere there. So you're getting as much sun, as much moon, as much rain, as much sleet, as much like star dust coming down and falling upon that because there's no canopy, it chooses to grow where there's no canopy. So it's getting smashed by the elements and smashed by cosmic forces coming down into our atmosphere. And it's soaking that up and concentrating it, especially in the stem and that's why herbalists over thousands of years have risked their life climbing up trying to get this herb of gold. And it's a jing herb. It's a yin jing herb. It's a herb of essence, bringing longevity to the body, power to the body, rejuvenation to the body. Um, and at the, at the same time, bringing a, um, uh, like a landing through, through the kidney organ system for the nervous system to sit upon so it doesn't have to go bang, 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 bang. You know, sympathetic, parasympathetic. It's got like a nice rock solid grounding. It's very... Um, and at the same time, sealing to the energy within our kidneys so that we're, you know, from a, from a chemical level, from an electro, um, electromagnetic level, we're not leaking energy. We're not leaking jing. That's kind of an example of why it's important to be getting out there and foraging for your own herbs, ideally not getting your herbs grown in labs, definitely not growing, getting your herbs growing on mediums that they don't like to grow on, like the mushrooms grown on rice or something to that extent because that's not what they like to eat. You know, people aren't eating grain-fed um, meat or cream and butter anymore. It's grass-fed. And it's the same with mushrooms. Why are people having grain-fed mushrooms that doesn't eat that? It's good for the industry of, um, say, building materials and clothing materials that's emerging from the mushroom, the, the mushroom mycelium. That's a great reason to be growing among grains, but not for our consumption. Um, and then in labs, no, it's like there's no, you know, where's the rain? Where's the snow? Where's the sun? You know, like where's, where are the seasons? How is it going to be adaptogenic? It's, not, it's going to start. It's the same way. You'll see over generations, those herbs start losing their genetic power their punch same way that um homo um, homo sapiens are losing a lot of their genetic punch by being in domesticated and being indoors and not exposed to the elements um, an appropriate amount 
And so I don't have much more to share with that in terms of like my understanding of what that cosmic energy is. And um, yet I, I know that there's something there's something spiritual I can connect to in terms of a personality um, of the herb and something infinite in terms of um, we're in this together um, kind, you know, kind of feel. And it's also, it takes away when my mind comes up and has an agenda to what I want from that herb, <laughs> you know, I want this outcome. Um, it, it brings me connected more so to a weaving, um, a weaving intention where I can let go from the outcomes and just allow, you know, whatever to unfold. Mm. Yeah, cool. Um, I think that gave a good sort of overview, understanding. Um, and also, I just got this mental image of when you're talking about like the connection to the heavens and the cosmos and um, mm. like everything's interconnected. And then if you look at, you know, what you were describing before about the mushrooms, they have their own sort mm. of interconnection and they they connect what sounds like the ecosystem outside, like in the forest. And also when we ingest mm. them, they connect out our own ecosystem within our bodies um so i think that's also sort of like a like a microcosm and a macrocosm as well how everything's sort of interconnected absolutely <laughs> absolutely that's it and if we can just paint on that tapestry a, mac- a microcosm you know macrocosm within our microcosm and then realize that we're a macrocosm and we've got our like you know multiple infinite microcosms within ourselves all of a sudden the mind can get out a little bit of a way a little bit because it's a little bit slipperier in that conversation and you touched on the connectors i mean like when i was on a plant medicine journey like a few a few years ago and so i was um having having my own experience like you know and I uh, feel so very connected to the plant kingdom. I remember walking outside and going, oh, mushrooms, what are mushrooms? And I, and I just heard this, they're the fascia. And it was just something I'd researched and looked in the fascia. I was just like, they're fascia food. And no one really talks about it. And the, 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 the role that protein-bound polysaccharides that especially are prevalent in medicinal mushrooms have on the fascia in bringing plumpness and being for them to hold and be the highway for information that they are. And especially you've got to give this thing out um, to tremolo mushroom and it's like a jellyfish mushroom it's just like you know we just brought it recently in um, super feast and it's just like it's not the fact that no one's heard about it it's just like, re- like it was like resonance resonance you know it was the fact it's a beauty mushroom so yes it's for you know skin and and hair and, and, and it supports nails and, and moisture and hyaluronic acid with, you know and all that kind of stuff you know which you know people in the cosmic um cosmetic industry would know but it's just like it's fascia food and it's just like oh it's just like that's like Again, it's like, oh, it's a beauty mushroom. But how does beauty feel within yourself as you start to see radiance emerging from you when you're, say, you're getting hydrated and you're getting on green juices and, you know, cleaning up your diet and getting pesticides out and, say, getting onto things like um, beauty herbs, like um, a tremola that are feeding your fascia and getting onto other beauty herbs like shizandra, very crazy good herb <laughs> like crazy like is it the herbs just like absolutely next level which is, has deep liver toning capacity and so all of a sudden you're processing hormones in a correct manner you're removing toxicity in the correct manner and so on and so forth and radiance starts to emerge in your skin and your eyes and your hair what does that feel like what are the conditions you, you're actually experiencing and again like you know when you can feel your energy coming back online beauty and radiance start becoming this external bullshit thing that the, you know, the cosmetic industry can just throw at you or even the, the, the health scene can just throw at you. It's something you can feel and you tend to over a lifetime. Mm. Yeah, I love how you keep on coming back to that idea of feeling, like, um, like not when you integrate, you know, these plants into your diet, um, you know, feeling into how that's going to look and feeling which plants you want um and feeling how it feels in your body um just yeah feeling that process as well um yeah i think that's also really important thank you for coming and sharing your your knowledge and your experience and all of this amazing information with us today mason i think um yeah like we said a lot of this this knowledge is isn't really known in our um culture and our society so um yeah, thank you for sharing that with us and expanding that awareness. Absolutely, my pleasure. Yeah, like if anyone wants to tune in further to all this, you know, I'm, I'm out there. You can find me. <laughs> yeah. Mason Taylor. Yeah. Yep, super feast.
yeah, find us at Superfeast and, you know, get it like my website's masonjtaylor.com. You know, I've got my podcast, The Mason Taylor Show, lots of goodies on there. And then hit me up on Instagram. Um, I'm, that's like the one place I'm super interactive <laughs> so on my Instagram and on Superfeast Instagram. So if you've got cool. direct questions, um, hit up one of those Instas. Cool.